Raptors point guard Fred Van Vliet is in the middle of a heavily scrutinized season, but a recent game against the Charlotte Hornets would indicate once again that he could be one of the most underrated players in the NBA. In a recent game against the Charlotte Hornets, Fred Van Vliet created even more Raptors history by setting a franchise record. So in today's video, we're going to be covering some of the history of the records within the Raptors and the NBA showcase, why this feat is so impressive. And then we're going to also discuss Fred Van Vliet's evolution as an NBA player and how he got to this point where potentially he's going to be making upwards of $30 million next season. And stick around to find out if I think that he should be making that much money or if that is an overpay for the player. So for starters, Fred Van Vliet, in yesterday's game against the Charlotte Hornets, had a 20-point game, but also added in 20 assists for the Toronto Raptors, which is a new franchise record for assists in a single game. This surpassed the previous mark of 19 that was shared by three different players. It was set in 1996 by Damon Stoudemire. It was matched in 2009 and 2011 by Jose Calderon, a little bit of a fan favorite, the Spanish point guard. And also, it was matched in 2021 by the greatest Raptor of all time, Kyle Lowry. So, in the long history of the Toronto Raptors, not as long as some other teams in the NBA, I recognize that, but it's been nearly 30 years of existence for the Raptors. And this record was set in 1996. Like, that was three years before I was even born in which that record was set. But yesterday, Fred Van Vliet was finally the person who broke that record. And he set 20 assists against the Charlotte Hornets. This is also the fourth 20-20 and 20 game in Toronto Raptors history. And it is the first in Raptors history, of course, to have 20 assists featured in the 2020 game. The previous times this has occurred has been by Popeye Jones in 96 with rebounds, Chris Bosh in 2005 and 2006, because he's done it twice, where he also did it with the points and rebounds. So an incredibly impressive feat by Fred Van Vliet, but many people are going to be thinking here, it was against the Charlotte Hornets. And it was against the Charlotte Hornets in a game where you know, with all due respect, everybody who is in the NBA is a good basketball player, but that was a G League starting lineup put out by the Charlotte Hornets. And it was a game the Raptors were expected to win by a wide margin. But like I said, in nearly 30 years of history for this franchise, there have been plenty of easy games. There have been plenty of these sort of games in which a player could have hit 20 assists and nobody did until this one from Fred Van Vliet. And it wasn't an overtime game. It was a game in which the Raptors scored 128 points. And yeah, for the modern NBA, even that might be a lot, but that's not some of the crazy scores we're seeing today with 150 to 150. What I'm trying to say is you absolutely cannot discredit a 20 assist game, no matter who the opponent is in the National Basketball Association. So now Fred Van Vliet has the franchise record for single game points when he scored 54 against the Orlando Magic a couple years ago. And he also has the single game franchise record for assists in a game, of course, with 20. There was only one other player in the entire history of the NBA who holds the franchise record for single game points and single game assists for the same team, and that is Wilt Chamberlain, who holds it for Philadelphia. So pretty remarkable for Fred Van Vliet to be in the same sentence as a record held by Wilt Chamberlain. Now, the exact figure of points and the exact figure of assists, they don't line up with Wilt Chamberlain, absolutely not, but it's still an impressive feat and a testament to Fred Van Vliet being one of the all-time greats for the Toronto Raptors. But enough on our history lesson there. Let's go into Fred Van Vliet's game and how it's evolved over time and how we've gotten to this point. A couple years ago, I was on this channel saying that I feel like Fred Van Vliet is a shooting guard trapped in a point guard's body, and he's being kind of forced into this sort of role as a point guard based on his limitations with athleticism, based on his limitations with his height. Fred Van Vliet on a good day is about six feet tall, which just doesn't really fit the mold for a modern NBA shooting guard, particularly as a point guard. Yeah, you can get it done. He's clearly showing that. It'd be nicer if he was taller, but he's not. Is that indictment against a player? Maybe a little bit, but the way he plays certainly overcomes any sort of deficiencies that there may be with his height. And we're seeing it a lot right now. We're seeing it a lot this season. Fred Van Vliet, even today, people will call him a shooting guard trapped in a point guard's body. But I firmly have switched off of that side. And Fred Van Vliet's evolution and development as a point guard based on the necessity of having him in that position has been tremendous. 
earlier on in Fred Van Vliet's Raptors career, he was playing a lot alongside Kyle Lowry, with Fred Van Vliet being the actual shooting guard for that team. You could say it was two point guards, and maybe that is a bit of a more accurate statement to what the Raptors did at the time, playing with two point guards. But a lot of the time, Fred Van Vliet could be off ball, didn't have to be the primary ball handler to such a consistent degree. Well, nowadays, Kyle Lowry isn't on this team. Nowadays, the Raptors don't even have a serviceable backup point guard. So the ball handling load so consistently and to such a high volume falls to Fred Van Vliet. And coming into this season, even going into last season a little bit, I wasn't fully convinced, even though Fred Van Vliet had his all-star season last year. The first year, the first time the Raptors are without Kyle Lowry on this team having Fred Van Vliet, I was a bit unsure of Fred Van Vliet's ability to play as a point guard, and play as a primary playmaker, because I didn't really think he had that in him. I think last season was a bit of a transition year in terms of his playmaking, though. I mean, the offense was there. He was an all-star, after all. This season, I've really seen the next level to Fred Van Vliet's game as a playmaker and a point guard. Yesterday's win over the Charlotte Hornets in the 20 assist game is only a testament to that. I felt this for a very long time here. The way he dictates the offense, the way he dictates the place of play, the way he gets other players involved, that has been great this season. And it's only been heightened by the addition of Jakob Pearl to this team. A big catalyst in Fred Van Vliet getting those 20 assists was the amount of pick and roll sets the Raptors could run and the amount of assists just specifically Fred Van Vliet could debt to Jakob Pertl at the rim. Good finishes by Jakob Pertl, good passes by Fred Van Vliet. But Great actions being involved because the half-court offense looked so good for the Raptors yesterday, and it has looked so good consistently with Fred Van Vliet playing with Jakob Pertl in the pick and roll. That is not an indictment against Fred Van Vliet's game that he's playing so well with one of his teammates and one of his new slash old teammates in Jakob Pertl here. That is a great sign to see. The point guard that you have on your team and the center that you want to lock up for the foreseeable future, they play really well together and they get the most out of each other. In fact, they improve each other's game. That is a great benefit to the team, and it's a testament once again to Fred Van Vliet's evolution as a playmaker to continue to execute in so many of those settings to such a consistent degree. Since the trade deadline, Fred Van Vliet has been averaging near nine assists per game, and that is playing with Jakob Pertl. Fred Van Vliet has typically been you know, a, a six to seven assists per game guy, which maybe you want to see a little bit higher from the point guard position, but when we get a full season potentially of Jakob Pertl and Fred Van Vliet playing on the same team, can we see Fred Van Vliet average these sort of numbers to a consistent degree all throughout the season? That would certainly be a big question. But the issue in seeing this for a full season would be Jakob Pertl's contract is up, but more importantly, Fred Van Vliet's contract is up at the end of the season. So, what exactly is Fred Van Vliet worth? Is he worth bringing back? If he is worth bringing back to his team, how much should the Raptors be paying him? A lot of my opinions on Fred Van Vliet have really been shaped throughout this season. Fred Van Vliet has improved drastically as a point guard, but his shooting definitely has taken a little bit of a slide this season. I mean, yesterday, 20 assists, but he also was one of eight from three. People would deem that as Fred Van Vliet being a shot chuck or whatever, Honestly, Fred Van Vliet had eight really good three-point attempts yesterday, eight really good looks. They weren't falling. That was bad shooting. A lot of them are wide open. He wasn't hitting them. That needs to improve. It has seen a bit of an improvement recently, but there's no question. His shooting numbers are down this season compared to what he would expect them to be and what we as fans would expect them to be. But based on what he's accomplished in his career as a shooter, as a scorer, there is reason to believe that this is going to come back. The shooting is going to be able to come back. And based on the consistency of the playmaking, the ball handling, dictating the pace of the offense, dictating the offense in general, based on what we've seen from, from him this season in those endeavors, there's reason to believe that is going to continue, especially if you are going to pair him once again with Jakob Pertl. So this makes Fred Van Vliet a very valuable part of this team, especially when a player like Fred, when he's not shooting well like yesterday, he's still super impactful offensively, still scoring 20 points, still getting 20 assists, still playing great defense. He's been a great defender since the middle of January, where his season really, really took a turn for the better after uh, an admittedly very rough start to the season for the player in terms of his impact. His defense was struggling, his shooting was struggling, his playmaking was struggling. But now we are really seeing Fred Van Vliet near his best. And even when he's not doing one part of his game, like the shooting well, there are so many other aspects of his game that make him such an invaluable piece for the Raptors on the court. This is something that other players like maybe Gary Trent Jr. don't have. I want to bring back Gary Trent Jr., but if I'm picking between the two, 
I'm firmly on the mindset that Fred Van Vliet is the guy you need to keep on your team, whether or not that's going to cost you more money. I mean, it is going to cost you more money. But for Gary Trent Jr., great score, good score. But when there are games when he's not scoring, he like you can't even have him on the floor because he doesn't do anything else nearly good enough to warrant NBA playtime. Fred Van Vliet has all of these different ways he can affect the game, and that is vital. So how much does that make him worth? Well, there are a variety of things that go into pricing Fred Van Vliet from a contract standpoint. We've spoken about them on this channel already, but the reality is Fred Van Vliet is going to be a free agent. The Raptors don't have any sort of replacements lined up with the new CBA agreements, with the new agreements in place. The cap is going to increase. Fred Van Vliet is going to know that, and the Raptors have his bird rights. With his bird rights, you can go a little bit over the tax and keep the player on your team. That is the point of it. So it incentivizes the team giving the player a bit more money, and incentivizes the player staying with the team because, well, they can get a bit of extra money that maybe other teams can't give. The Raps can go a little bit into the tax to pay Fred Van Vliet, but they can't go a little bit into the tax to pay somebody else. So they would have to find a replacement for Fred Van Vliet in the offseason, and they won't be able to pay that player as much as Fred Van Vliet. So the likeliest scenario is, even with a pretty bad crop of free agency, supposedly being available in the summer, it already is going to be difficult to replace Fred. Doing it with less money than you can give Fred is going to be an absolutely impossible task. The only thing that could happen in that scenario is a downgrade in that position, which the Raptors presently cannot afford. Fred Van Vliet and his agency Clutch Sports are going to recognize what I just said, and that will get him a little bit of extra money in those negotiations. So as far as Fred Van Vliet's contract goes, the Raptors are going to have to give him 30 plus million. And the reality is from what we've seen from this season, he's worth that. That's going to be met with a lot of pushback from fans. I understand there's people probably watching this video. You might be watching this video thinking that's a gross overpay, but it is not. It really is not. With the caliber of the player, the cap going up, and the contract situation that the Raptors are facing, the cap situation the Raptors are facing that's going to be used as leverage by Fred Van Vliet's side in negotiations, he's going to be making $30 million dollars. And to be honest, that's a pretty good deal for him. If that cost Gary Trent Jr. in the process, so be it. It's not Fred Van Vliet's fault that the Raptors front office have put themselves in this position with the cap constrictions. But I have firm belief Jakob Pertl is going to remain with this team. And it should be a priority to bring Fred Van Vliet back to this team. And yesterday's 20 assist game setting a Raptors single game franchise record for assists in a game against the Charlotte Hornets is a further testament to his ability and his evolution as a point guard. Not bad for somebody who's been deemed as a shot chucker, selfish, non-point guard. That is all for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more Raptors content like this, videos, shorts, live streams, all this great Raptors content, and help me on the road to 14,000 subs. We'll see you next time.